Right, thank you so much, uh, Ndogozo. We will be looking at um, what happened at, uh, in Belgium. There's an official ceremony in Brussels on the 20th of June in Belgium that will be held over a relic of Patrice Lumumba, the former Belgian colony's first prime minister who was slain in 1961 to the Democratic Republic of Congo. Now, uh, the goal is to restore Lumumba's remains to his homeland. In, case, in this case, it's a goal to be retrieved by the Belgian legal system from the family of a police officer who was involved in the body's removal over 60 years ago. The Belgian Prime Minister said Lumumba's children will be among the Congolese delegation receiving the two. To discuss this further, we're joined by an independent African analyst, Jean Boissa, uh, via video link. A very good morning to you, Jean. Uh, thank you so much for your time this morning. Really, it's uh, uh, just another drop in a, a large colonial past that we have between uh, Europe and Africa. This. Um, let's, let's first start with the killing of Patrice Lumumba. Why did that even happen? The killing of Patrice Emery Lumumba, one of the greatest le black African leaders, uh, happened just because of uh, his uh, uh, struggle and his fight against uh, imperialism, against uh, neocolonialism, and against the. When you speak about state capture, about the entire Congo capture uh, in the 1960s, uh, which was also during the Cold War. And we best remember that uh, Congo was uh, at the forefront of uh, the Cold War due to its uh, resources, mineral resources. You must not forget that uh, we have the second largest river, the second largest forest, and many minerals that are key and strategic. Like they were in the 1960s, they are also uh, strategic in the 20th century, believe. Yes, it is good. It's a closure for the family that uh, as an African and as a child of the soil of the Congo, uh, we need to investigate more and see whether it is really uh, normal that this relief returns to the Congo uh, at the moment where the Congolese people are in a conflict, uh, an eternal conflict that has been going on for the past 25 years. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, you mentioned the fact that it is closure for the family, but uh, for, for, you know, the Congolese people, maybe not so much. I mean, the fact that they're returning a gold tooth and some finger bones also is, is absolutely harrowing. Let's talk about a little bit more about that influence that Belgium had on the Congo. I mean, going all the way back to King Leopold and, and even the influence that they had on, on the African continent for other European uh, colonizers as Leopold, uh, his forced labor system was ultimately implemented across the, the, the continent at large. Well, uh, we must remember that uh, what usually people uh, call in history the Berlin Conference was not the Berlin Conference, but it was called Das uh, Kong, that's Congo Conference in Berlin. So the Congo Conference in Berlin. And that's where all these uh, leaders were gathered, not to split Africa, but to understand and to agree each other to get a convention on who and how they're all going to partition and to get uh, a never end on the minerals in the Congo and the riches in the Congo. That's the first step that we must reestablish, that the, co the Berlin Conference was mainly called the Congo Conference. Mm -hmm. And that's the influence that uh, uh, King Leopold II had, uh, and he took the, co the Congo as uh, a farm. So it was his farm in his pocket, and he could behave the way he, he liked. And as there was... 15 million people killed in the Congo. 15 million Congolese were killed uh, during his tenure. But it's still not being called a genocide, which I term myself and I call a Congo side, a Congo side that is going on until today. So uh, it's really horrendous. It is tragic and pathetic that today uh, in, uh, they're going to return, after 60 years, uh, 61 years, they're going to return the relic of Patrice Emery Lumumba, who fought for the emancipation mm -hmm. of not only for the Congolese people, but for each and every child of Africa. And today, Africa, we are still not emancipated. And we cannot just say uh, we, we blame uh, Belgium, because it was France was involved, the MIC 
scientists of uh, MI16 uh, of uh, England was involved. They were all involved. The CIA was involved. Devlin, all these imperial powers were involved. And I think if there's anything that this group can bring in the Congo, it's for all these countries that were involved to say, we have seen so much bloodshed in the Congo. This is the time this relic can bring peace. We need to stop. We need to find peace in the Congo, in the eastern side of the Congo for these children that are dying, mm -hmm. for these mothers of their head. As we speak, there are gunshots because Congo is being attacked by uh, militias that are supported by African countries that we call Rwanda and Uganda. And it is a time where Lumumba's spirit must come back and say, each and every child of the Congo must defend the land for which he died for. Mm, let's take it, uh, you know, back to the practices that we saw during uh, the uh, colonization of Congo, uh, and, and, and maybe how Belgians view themselves and view that uh, 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 Belgians now. Um, in Congo, we know that uh, the slaves or the workers, they used to get their hands cut off for not meeting their quota uh, when they were supposed to be producing rubber. Um, and now you see in Belgium chocolates that are in the shape of hands. Uh, you know, almost, uh, well, not even almost, but that is depicting those slaves' hands that were cut off. I mean, what do you make of how... Um, Belgians, including the current king, including the current prime minister, view uh, their role on the African continent and particularly in Congo. I think we are just struggling for, uh, with connection there uh, to Jean Boisseau. We're just going to try to get him back on the line, uh, <coughs> excuse me, for the last couple of uh, minutes for this conversation there. We're talking about um, Patrice Lumumba, the DRC or Democratic Republic of Congo's first prime minister who was assassinated only a year after becoming prime minister, only a year into uh, uh, Congo's uh, independence, the, which happened uh, in 1960. I hear you are back, Jean. I don't know if you caught that uh, question of mine, so I'm just going to pose it to you again. What do we make of how, you know, uh, Congo, I mean, how uh, Belgians view their role in the DRC? Um, King Philip becoming the first uh, royal, Belgian royal, to express regrets, and that only happened in 2020 uh, for the colonial crimes. Uh, well, uh, uh, an apology doesn't mean anything uh, to Congolese children, because I in any case, when we're talking about uh, uh, Congo, it's not an apology. It's, m it's more than that. We need reparation. We need uh, a tribunal, uh, a tribunal for the Congo, uh, where each and every stakeholder must be involved and must be held accountable for the atrocities that have been happening during uh, Leopold's uh, tenure and uh, since uh, uh, independence, with the killing of Patrice Emery Lumumba. Who uh, Okito and Polo that were also assassinated because we focus on Patrice Emery Lumumba, but we forget that two other uh, uh, leaders were killed at that time, and it evolved in what we call also the, um, the, the rebellion, the Mulele rebellion, and many people have been killed since uh, uh, the assassination of Patrice Emery Lumumba. And as we speak, because it's good to speak about the past, but what about the present now, where are these ends that were cut and butchered by King Leopold II, have they ended? No, they have not ended. Today, it's uh, uh, our mothers that are victims of rape. So the violence continues in the Democratic Republic of the Congo just for the mere fact that Congo is the richest country on earth. Mm -hmm. We need to, to tackle on the present now and end the conflict in the Congo, bring peace, stability in the Congo so that... Uh, we can have uh, at least development of the infrastructure in the Congo. And I don't think that the leaders of today, uh, namely uh, Mr. Felix Chilombo Chisekedi, is one of those people who can actually host and acknowledge the reception of the relic of Patrice Emery Lumumba, because supposedly his father was involved 
in uh, the plot that meant uh, that Patrice Emery Lumumba and Mpolo and Okito were killed. So today, he was a member of the imperialism. He, he was the betrayer inside. Today, we still have Congolese that are betrayers uh, that in the inside of the Congo. As Patrice Emery Lumumba uh, put himself, it is history must be rewritten by the children of Africa and by the children of the Congo. Mm -hmm. It's time that we put end to atrocities in the Congo and the entire world that participated to that must come on board and we must stop what is going in the Congo right now. In order for history to be re rewritten, we have to look at it first. How do you think um, this returning of Patrice uh, Lumumba's remains will be received in uh, the DRC? Well, I think it will be uh, a closure, as I said earlier on, for the family, uh, for those that are in power, who supposedly are in power, for them it will be a joy at the same time to, to get back uh, the remains of Patrice Emery Lumumba. But is, is it joy for a Congolese child who doesn't have... Uh, a birth certificate in the Congo, who doesn't have a citizenship ID in the Congo, who does not even have a place in the eastern side of the Congo where there are fugitives in their own land. So it's not for, it's not for that that Patrice Emery Lumumba died. He died for peace, stability, and the, economic, uh, the economics of uh, uh, Congo. So, and today they don't have that. They live with less than one dollar uh, monthly or uh, daily. So this is not the life for which Patrice Emery Lumumba gave uh, his life for. Mm. Uh, Congo, so I think that uh, there's no joy. Uh, Congo achieved uh, independence, you know, 60, almost 62 years ago now. It's still a lifetime for some people. Uh, you know, some people would have lived through those atrocities. Uh, how, uh, w w what sense do you get in regards to um, not only the reparations that need to happen, but also people being prosecuted for these uh, colonial crimes? Well, uh, it is very important that they be uh, prosecuted, uh, and it is very important that they repair where they have done wrong, and they restore the dignity of the Congolese people. But the way to do that, once they have built Belgium and uh, the, when you see the atomium in Brussels, that's the same way they must come and uh, uh, rebuild the Congo. Because uh, if you give money to the we're losing uh, Jean Boisse there, so we are going to end that conversation there. But thank you so much for your time this morning as independent Africa analyst uh, Jean Boisse on uh, the returning of uh, King, uh, or the first Prime Minister of the DRC, uh, Patrice Lumumba's remains to uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo. Up next, I give